Hello viewers, my name is Dinde Begintlatla, an educator from Mnokwa Senior Secondary School in Alfredo West. Welcome to the ECTOE broadcast studio. Today's lesson is about farm physical planning. This is where I will be presenting three topics back to back for your full understanding. Then the first topic is land use in the farming, under farming management. Then our learning objectives in the land use in agriculture are based on the grazing for livestock. The second one is soil cultivation. Then the third one that I'm going to talk about is soil pollution, degradation and conservation. Let me start by unpacking the first topic, which is grazing for livestock as a farmer. Then, of course, when they are there, they are grazing. And then these animals, as they are grazing, this means you allow them outdoors to consume the wild vegetation. Then what are the important aspects? Look at the picture there. These are the animals that are grazing. Then the first aspect that is important in agriculture that we are going to talk about are the influence of valid use for grazing. Then there are four factors that influence valid use. Number one, it's palatability. It's very important as the factor of valid use. Number two, it's topography, vegetation and erosion. Then as we move to the next one, we normally divide our camps in the world. Why do we divide our camps? It's because we want the field to be available throughout the year. Therefore, it is wise for planning of veld through making the camps in your field. Then how does this help us as farmers? Number one, it maximizes the continuous production of high quality Number two, have feed available in times of slow growth, especially in winter season. You know that there is a shortage of feed. Therefore, as farmers, you have to buy feed. While if you manage your camps thoroughly, it will be easy to avoid such. Then another one which help us to, max, to minimize the animal stress. You know, if you are hungry, you become stressed as a person. Same apply to our animals. When they are hungry, they become stressed because they have to travel a long distance to find the feed. Then it also prevent the degradation of, the, of grazing because if animals, they continue grazing the same field, what is normally happening, the field become overgrazed. Then it also provides the nutrition requirements of livestock because they don't just eat. If the grass, is, if the grass is not palatable, as I said before, there will be no nutrition for those animals. And also camps also helps to respond to natural disasters, disasters such as the floods, the droughts, and so on. Let's move to another aspect under the veld grazing. There are classification of pastures. And then when I'm talking about the classification of pastures, I'm referring to palatability. Is that grass nutritious or less nutritious? Number two, is it sweet, sour, mixed veld? If you remember in previous grades where we had those mixed sour and sweet veld. Then we also have the topography which we need to consider as farmers during the natural pastures, which means you can't just have the veld that is flat. The, you know that in the farm there are mountains, there are slopes, there are hills and so on. Then the way they graze comes affected. Then another aspect that we need to focus on is the condition of vegetation. The condition of vegetation, it depends. If you find that the other one is good, the other one is moderate and poor, that means the one that is poor, it is overgrazed. Therefore, it is vulnerable to soil erosion. Then another classification, it's low-lying, 
where I'm referring to salt pans, the wet valleys, the rivers, and the meshes. You know the field is not the same throughout the farm. Then we move to another one, which is the last one, the erosion conditions. You find that in your whole field, there are areas where soil erosion normally takes place. There are areas where there is moderate erosion as well as severe erosion. That means it normally occurs in those areas. Then we move to pasture planning, my kids. Under pasture planning, it is determined by the carrying capacity. Of course, you want to know what is a carrying capacity. It simply means here, a carrying capacity refers to an area of grazing that is necessary to produce enough feed for certain types of animals without losing the quality. It's very important to note the carrying capacity because in the farm there are different animals like cattle, like sheep, goats. But the way they graze is totally different. For example, the horses, they normally overgraze the soil compared to sheep. Then, to determine the grazing capacity or the carrying capacity, sometimes we call it grazing capacity. If you don't call it a carrying capacity. Then there are steps that we need to focus on because our animals require feed throughout the year. As I said, it's for a flow, that one. There are steps that we need to consider. You need step number one to calculate the, the, the daily intake required per animal. You also need to calculate the annual intake required per animal. The difference between daily and annual, we know that seasons are not the same. Then the third step, you determine your veld types. As I said before, veld types are categorized into three, it's sweet, sour, and mixed. Therefore, the fourth step, you determine the carrying capacity of each veld in your farm. Then let's move to another important aspect that we need to talk about, which is based on making camps. Remember we said in the pastures or in the field, you should have camps. Then you, what do you do? What do I mean when I'm talking about the camps? Camps refers to the division of a veld into subdivision in order to manage the veld. Remember I said there are specific seasons where the grass grows slowly, such as in winter season. That's why we have to make camps as farmers. Then how do we do that? We, step number one, you fence off a veld types, which means it's better and it is effectively utilized by the livestock because you divide your field into subsection. They graze in camp one, they move to another one. By doing so, the camp they left behind, it gets a chance to recover there. And also, when you are making camps, rotational grazing is implemented. Rotational grazing is implemented, which assists us to prevent overgrazing. When I'm talking about overgrazing, it's a continuous grazing which leave the soil vulnerable to erosions and so on. Then let us move to reasons for camps. Let's move to reasons for camps. Of course, the question will come up saying, why do we need to make camps? These five important points are very, very crucial learners because they are the one that makes sure that the farmers do not spend too much time buying feed for animals. The reason number one for planning camps allows the farmer, allows the rotational of crop production, the one that we call crop rotation. You know that you plant one crop in the same piece of land year after year. On the other year, you plant another crop in the same field. That is what we call crop ro rotation. Reason number two why we make camps is it helps us to separate different kinds of soil for optimum soil utilization. Of course, in the farm, there are 
soil where you find that in this field crops cannot do well, let me move and uh, put the crawl for our livestock. And then on the other year, you change that crawl, you put it in the other area, you plant in the one that was used for crawl, then you find that the soil has recovered. Then number three, it helps us to apply rotational grazing. Of course, we said there is over grazing, therefore we want to rotate the animals when we make camps. Number four, uh, it also allows the livestock farmers to have different heads of animals. As I said, when I'm talking about the head of animals, there are cattle, sheep, goats, pigs, and so on. Then the last one, it helps to conserve the soil from overgrazing. Sometimes you can say it prevents overgrazing. It prevents overgrazing. Instead of saying conserve, because you might forget that. Then let's move to another one. It helps to prevent the overgrazing. Then as we continue, my lovely kids, we move to the next questions. Then the questions that I'm going to show to you, they are based on what I said to you. Why am I showing you these interesting questions? This will also help you to grab what was the lesson about. For instance, in these questions, there are action verbs that are used there, which you need to know. For instance, the first question says, identify the source of feed for livestock. Of course, if you look at this one, it's very easy to answer. Then you can answer it in the comment section. Then the second one, it's very interesting because in the question paper, you find a different action verb used there. The second one says, suggest three factors influencing the world grazing. Of course, I've mentioned them in the presentation, but what is the difference between identifying and suggesting? When you suggest, it simply means that you give advice to farmers. What should they do? Then the third one, it says outline the use of camps in the farm. Of course, I've explained them in the presentation as well. But there is an interesting concept that appears on question four, where they say, define the word carrying capacity. Don't go and look back to the presentation. Just try to elaborate what do you understand about carrying capacity. Then, of course, I was mentioning the steps there. I've mentioned some steps there in the presentation, but there were no calculations. But here they are. That means these calculations, they are based on those steps when you determine the carrying capacity. Then this question says, calculate the daily feed intake of lactating animals of 650 kg. When I'm talking about lactating animals, these animals, they produce milk for their calves. Then they say, use the formula below and round off the answer to the nearest whole number. Your final answer is in kg. Simply means after the comma, there should be no remainder after the comma. Then here again, below it says, Daily feed intake is equal animal mass multiplied by 2.3%. Then how would you tackle such question? If you remember, animals need feed daily, they need feed annually. Then I hope you will answer this question in the comment session. Let us check the questions that are based on the topic that I've presented to you to see how we can answer these questions. This is also a build up from a previous grade, which is grade 11. Let us look at the question paper there. Uh, there is a picture there 
which there are two pictures, which is farm A and farm B. The first thing when you come across with the picture, just try to analyze the picture before you go to the questions so that you can get what is going on in that picture. This is 2.5 under farm physical planning, which says there, there is a farm A which is there, which has got five cattle. Then there is farm B which has five cattle, but there are arrows which shows exactly what is happening. You see these black arrows there. They show what exactly is happening. Then let's go to the question to see what exactly is required. It says briefly discuss. I said to you it's very important to read the action verbs. It says discuss the grazing systems as illustrated above. That means they want to know what is this grazing system a, at farm A. Then if you look at farm A, there are five cattle there. Then there is farm B. Farm B, you can see the rotational grazing which I was talking about, which is the one that I'm interested in. It's a continue, sorry, I mean it's a rotational grazing because our animals, they move from one camp to another. At that time, they move to another camp, they give a chance for the camp to restore. That means here, as I said, the camp that is left behind, it continues to grow the grass. It continues to grow the grass. Then we quickly go to the question to question two. On our question two, it says the state the disadvantages of grazing systems used on farm B, which is the one that I was explaining about farm B. If you look at farm B, it's the one that I said it's a rotational grazing. It's a rotational grazing as they graze. What are the disadvantages? As you can see, those cattle, they are five there. As they move, they normally release feces for the first camp. They go to the next one. Behind the, there are pests which normally affect that veld. Then let's move to 2.53. Our intention here is about understanding the action verb used in each question. Then 253, it says, describe advantages of resting the camp for a longer period, which is equal one year. Then these advantages, of course, as a learner, you need to think, when I take my cattle from one camp to another, what is going to happen to the one that I left behind? Number one, the, it gives a pasture to grow in that first camp. Number two, it ensures that these animals have a feed available. Also, the, it also confuses the pests that tend to affect the cattle, like the blue ticks. Then I believe you understand these questions. Then... I'm not going to talk more about the following questions because they are based on labor laws, these ones. Thank you. We have to come to the end of our lesson. You can leave your question on the comment section. Do not forget to leave the name of your school so we can give shout outs. Please share, recommend, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching. See you on our next lesson, which is going to be talking about the soil cultivation.